Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Wednesday, October 30th, 2013, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, DHS buys more weapons to use against Americans. Then, gun grabbers change their aim from assault rifles to toy guns. And Sebelius fills the heat as healthcare.gov crashes and burns. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. You think I'm like you, you little freaking coward? You think I'd sell my family out like you, dirtbag? You think I'm freaking scum like you? You think I'm a coward like you? Who is in charge, Madam Secretary? The person now in charge as an integrator is QSSI, one of our... Who was in charge the as it was CMS being team built? was in charge uh, up to... At that team, who is the individual? Michelle Snyder is the... Michelle CEO. Snyder is the one responsible for this debacle. Well, excuse me, Congresswoman. Michelle Snyder is not responsible for the debacle. Hold me accountable for the debacle. Okay. I'm responsible. Well, Drudge Report is calling her the most hated woman in America right now, but I can think of a few other women there in Washington that deserve that title more than Kathleen Sibelius. But nevertheless, she continues to be the punchline as healthcare.gov continues to be the big joke that it is. Now, Sibelius was set to testify before Congress today about the issues the website is having, and wouldn't you know it, the site crashed just minutes before she was set to testify. But still, during her testimony today, Secretary Sibelius claimed the website never crashed. It is functional, but at a very slow speed and very low reliability. It's clearly a hypothetical situation. Oh, are you? Do you say? Wait. People to okay, on the C plans now option. Are you saying this is a hypothetical? That's not what it says on the site. It says this is the price when you put in your age, and if your age is 49, it quotes you. As if you're 27. So they never asked you to delay the launch date? Uh, they did not. And frankly, I, I think it is not um, valuable at this point right. to do a lot of um, pointing blame, fixing the blame. What I want to do is fix the problem. And, and so I do I. I think we need the whole team to move but, ahead, and we will report but, back regularly. Right, but we're relying on these contractors to fix this. You accepted a risk on behalf of every user of this uh, computer that put their personal financial information at risk because you did not even have the most basic end-to-end -end test on security of this system. Says, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. Well, Madam Secretary, while you're from Kansas, we're not in Kansas anymore. Uh, some might say that we are actually in the Wizard of Oz land, uh, given the parallel universes we appear, appear to be um, habitating, Mr. Waxman and most of those on the Democrat side, think things are great. You know, my Republican colleagues' actions here remind me of a story I read when I was a little boy, and that's the story of Chicken Little, who ran around yelling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. But unlike Chicken Little, my Republican colleagues are actually rooting for the sky to fall. The application process? process at this point does not work End to end. Right. Very I understand well. it doesn't and work. We That's do not obvious. have reliable data. So, I just said. No, you said if we can do it. No, I think we can do that okay. is what I, I said. I think or I know we can do it. I, sir, <laughs> I, I can't tell you what I don't know. During the testimony, the focus on Obamacare shifted from the faulty website to the fact that millions of Americans are losing the insurance that President Obama repeatedly and over two elections promised them that they could keep. But don't worry, if you're one of those millions who've been dropped from your health insurance, Democrat Sander Levin said, insurance companies aren't sending out cancellation notices, they're helping you transition into Obamacare. <laughs> now, Obama can say he didn't know that millions would lose their health insurance, but of course he knew, because single-payer health care under the federal government has been the plan all along. But Senator Levin isn't the only one who is using doublespeak to describe Obamacare. The White House is ordering insurance companies not to criticize Obamacare and threatening retribution against the executives who don't keep quiet. CNN reporter Drew Griffin explained that the Obama administration is trying to keep a lid on the dirty little secret that millions of Americans are losing their coverage as a result of Obamacare illustrating how Obama blatantly lied when he made assurances that people could keep their existing policy. Griffin says the insurance industry is embarrassed about the cancellations, 
but said they warned the administration about this very scenario and they ignored the advice. One of the things I think that's clear here is the Obama administration has no trust in, in anything the health insurance industry tells them about run, how to run a health plan. And I think the administrative mess you're seeing right now is indicative of what happens when somebody tries to run somebody else's business who thinks they're smarter than you are. Griffin also suggested that insurance companies are obeying the White House gag order because it is the federal government who is the largest customer for the insurance companies. Of course, but it's not just the insurance companies who are feeling the boot of tyranny on their necks. Persecution of the press is here. Now the FCC is going to be policing news media outlets in an unprecedented move to jeopardize the First Amendment. I'm Gigi Arnetta. Welcome to Tyranny Watch. Well, our government is insisting on burning the First Amendment, and they're using the FCC to do it. There's a new survey that's going to be evaluating communities and what kind of information is going out, not only on our airwaves, but on the internet. This new survey is so intrusive, it smells of communism. They're justifying controlling the dissemination of content by creating a survey to tell outlets what people need to hear. Study of information needs to provide a comprehensive analysis of access barriers to CINs in diverse American communities. What specific type of content dominates those media ecologies? What is the flow of information? What barriers to entry exist in the FCC regulated markets? And to what extent do those barriers to entry have a negative impact? The government spends $354 million of our money to fund the FCC so they can tell us what they think we need to hear. Our First Amendment has already been under attack by them telling people how they can speak, what flags they can fly. They rewrite history books all the time and turn them into fiction. Whether people can pray in school and even on football fields inside of schools, it seems all too natural the next thing would be to take away the freedom of the press. Diving deeper into this document, it covers broadcast news, newspaper news, radio news, and a blanket statement, curiously, for the internet. And let's jump forward to what it talks about regarding reporters and anchors. On page 25, it gives a list. It asks, what's the new philosophy of the station? How much news does your station air every day? Who decides which stories are covered? How much influence do you have in deciding which stories to cover? Have you ever suggested coverage of what you consider a story with critical information for your customers that was rejected by management? If so, can you give an example? What was the reason given for the decision? And why do you disagree? They're also surveying only 10% of non-English media. But aren't they also responsible for serving the underserved in our community? For more information on this, go to Infowars.com. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch on the Infowars Nightly News. And just because you might be a civilian doesn't mean that you're safe from those think surveys. A new Japanese prototype wearable technology will help advertisers nestle into your gray matter. Radiation be damned because this iPhone rig is attached to your head and it comes with a brainwave scanner to record what interests you. And you thought those Google glasses were nerdy looking. <laughs> now stick around because coming up after the break, David Knight has a special report on the government's latest efforts to sabotage the Second Amendment, and then we'll be debuting the season two of Conrad the Constitution. How do their new neighbor? Oh, you're a turd! No, I'm not a turd. I'm the Affordable Care Act, but you can call me Obamacare. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. 
And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember... The revolution against tyranny is growing. Another day, another million dollars spent on weapons to be used against Americans. This time, the Department of Homeland Security signals its intent to spend half a million dollars purchasing pepper spray projectiles, pepper spray launchers, and riot expansion kits. Now, although the weapons are being purchased by Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the document makes it clear that they will be used to train Federal Protective Service agents. And according to a video demonstration, the TAC-700 pepper spray launcher has a strong psychological influence on the people it's being used against because it's so loud and sounds like an automatic machine gun. Obviously has a lot of unique benefits in that you can control the rate of fire. You have different types of rate of fire, including a three-round burst option with this system. So it's a good option for agencies that are looking for higher firepower, situations where they anticipate delivering a lot of projectiles, or situations where they want to have that extra psychological advantage when they deploy this in the field. As you can imagine, just hearing that discharge is a strong psychological influence on the people that it's being used against. Well, luckily, those pepper spray guns weren't being used yesterday. Protesters in California were demonstrating against the killing of a 13-year-old boy last week by a sheriff deputy. He shot the boy seven times in 10 seconds for carrying a plastic rifle while he was walking down the street. But instead of pointing the blame at that trigger-happy sheriff's deputy, gun grabbers are blaming toy guns. An attorney with a gun control group said police have a hard enough job without also having to be able to quickly determine whether a gun is real or not real. Now, California already requires fake guns to be painted in bright colors, but now State Senator Kevin DeLeon wants to extend that to BB and pellet guns as well. Now, never mind the fact that the deputy who shot 13-year-old Lopez seven times was a firearms instructor and range master who trained his law enforcement colleagues in the proper use of force for nearly two decades, and he should have been able to tell that it wasn't a real gun. No, it's not his fault at all. It's the fact that toy guns aren't made in hot pink Nerf foam. And they're not just coming after your toy guns, but ammunition as well. Gun control more and more is turning into a war on ammunition, leaving no doubt that this is about total disarmament. Gun control groups are pushing for background and registration of ammunition and not just guns. Another new front in the war on ammunition is environmental regulation. California just banned lead bullets for hunting, citing environmental protection. The Center for Biological Diversity has lobbied the EPA unsuccessfully so far to regulate ammunition as part of the Toxic Substances Control Act. But now the only ore to lead producer in America, the largest in the Western world, has been shut down by EPA regulation. For over 20 years, the company had been researching a wet chemical process and investing $30 million to replace smelting. The new process would have eliminated 99% of all current land, air, and water pollution releases, but EPA's regulatory uncertainty and estimated expense of $100 million to convert caused the company to finally throw in the towel. It's not just ammunition that's disappearing. American industry, American jobs are being regulated out of existence as well. 
Now, lead's still going to be manufactured in China, but it'll be done without any environmental oversight. It'll be scarce, it'll be expensive, we'll have fragile supply lines. There's more to the shutdown of Doe Run than just shutting down American industry and exporting jobs. It's part of a multi-pronged attack on ammunition. Drying up the market by hoarding all ammunition. Shutting down the market with background checks, registration, and banning of online sales. Using environmental regulation to ban the use and manufacture of lead. And after we can no longer manufacture ammunition domestically, we have the UN Arms Trade Treaty to stop the importation of ammunition. But if you look at the multiple ways they're trying to remove all ammunition, not just certain guns they believe are dangerous, there's no question that this is about all-out gun control. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. Now stay with us after the show because we're going to be premiering the second season of Conrad the Constitution. And then Jakari Jackson will sit down with Sheriff Mack to give us an update on the sheriff who is facing jail time to defend your Second Amendment right. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. Conrad the Constitution is the brainchild of Fox Brothers Studios. It's a YouTube web series that follows Conrad, the living, breathing Constitution, as he battles constant, everyday threats to his well-being. Today, I am speaking with the series co-creator, Tim Fox. Hi, Tim. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for having me on. So poor Conrad, he's always in jeopardy. Season one, he was targeted by the NSA, he was audited by the IRS, and Nancy Pelosi pooped on his lawn. So <laughs> what can we expect from season two? Yes, well, uh, a whole bunch of the same, really. Uh, nothing's really changed in <laughs> politics uh, since then, unfortunately. Exactly. So, uh, the kind of Constitution <laughs> continues to be the target of uh, molestations uh, if you might say, but, uh, <laughs> from politicians. And I, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, and it won't be in season two. Yeah, definitely not. It's, it's, uh, the government is the ongoing joke. So is, uh, is Conrad going to be trying to sign up for the Affordable Care Act? Oh, there will be uh, definitely <laughs> some more episodes uh, involving uh, the Affordable Care Act or uh, Obamacare, as other people know. Uh, and he will be returning uh, as a character in, in many more episodes. 
Well, definitely trying to navigate through the uh, the healthcare.gov website and actually dealing with the navigators themselves. I'm sure Conrad would have a lot of uh, a lot of potential jokes there. Oh yes, that uh, makes some good opportunities for some episodes. That's, re that's really what we've been doing is just <laughs> listening to the news, and that writes our episodes for us. So we don't have to do too much work. And kind of sad, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> it is a very it's sad. So easy. <laughs> America is kind of the laughing stock at the moment. Thank you, Obama. So now that his uh, his signature bill has turned out to be such a debacle, what do you think about Obama trying to tackle immigration? Oh, I'm I'm sure it'll be uh, the, quite the same debacle all over again. Uh, I, I'm just hoping he doesn't have time to get to it. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of my wish is that. Uh, it just gets stuck in one debacle, so it can't hurt uh, too many other things, uh, you know, right away. It gets slowed down with Obamacare, so he doesn't touch anything else for a while. So I know Conrad sort of touched on the issue of immigration in season one. Uh, what do you think? A lot of people say that, oh, this is a racist topic or, you know, people that have an issue with immigration are racist. And so then they're, you know, calling Conrad the living, breathing constitution racist. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, th I think people really do like to inject race into the whole border issue. But I, from my standpoint, I've never seen it as a matter of race, only just a matter of security. Uh, you know, you have a wide open border. Uh, who knows what that can lead to? You just have people that you, uh, that you don't even know who they are. You know, they're not being uh, checked out or being uh, uh, no, no one really knows who, who these people are. And it's not just a matter of race. It could be anyone coming across that border. It doesn't matter uh, who it is from my standpoint. Exactly. And uh, the White House is applying a lot of pressure to journalists and comedians and people that do uh, web series such as Conrad the Constitution, kind of applying pressure against anyone that is critical of this administration. But um, comedians have always made fun of the presidents. And, you know, here we had the, the, the rodeo clowns that wore the, the mask of Obama. Now they have to go through sensitivity training. What do you think about the administration's um, tolerance of the First Amendment? Well, it's quite frankly, it's really scary uh, just how... Uh uh, intolerant they are of uh, of people just poking fun at uh, anything they're doing, uh, you know, turning that to brave. So they're or they're insensitive. You know, whatever happened to yeah, the freedom of speech? I can make a cartoon and everyone can can you know watch it and you know have their own opinions. And uh, the, a rodeo clown can go out and poke a little fun at the president. Uh, without being called just a racist automatically or you know, something something worse and sending them to sensitivity training. I think it's just ridiculous. People have to remember that we have a constitution in this country and uh, you have, everyone has rights to say what they feel, to give their opinions. And as long as you're not hurting anyone, uh, I don't see uh, an issue. I know. Who, who knew that Obama was so sensitive? This administration is so sensitive. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Conrad uh, episode? Uh, I'd say probably my favorite is the uh, Obamacare episode. Uh, it's episode six of the first season. <laughs> uh, but this, the new episode uh, for this season is, is right up there. I think it's uh, one of the best ones we've done. Yeah, Conrad is actually going to be visiting... Uh, New York in this episode. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> Him and his, uh, his stuffed bald eagle baldy visit New York and they get to experience Mayor Bloomberg's soda band firsthand. So <laughs> it leads to some pretty funny places. Do you think America is morphing into Nazi Germany? <laughs> oh, I, you know, I mean, I don't know. It's quite, it's not quite there, but you can definitely see uh, just that law alone, the whole soda band. Are you ask people probably, you know, 10, 20 years ago, would, do you think there would be a soda ban in the United States where you can't go down and get any soda you wish to pay for out of your pocket? Uh, or you can't, you know, use this much salt? Uh, 
people would probably be surprised. I hope they would be, because I would never want that here. If you want to go drink soda, you should be able to drink soda. You know, if you want a lot of salt in your meals, which I wouldn't want to do, but if you want to do that, you should have the right. And I think that's what we're trying to say with this episode. Yeah, it's not like they actually care about our health. If they did, they wouldn't be putting all those chemicals and bad things and GMOs in our food and drinks and everything in, in our water in the first place. It's about control. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It is about control. Well, so what do you hope to do with the Conrad the Constitution series? What do you hope uh, the effect is? I just hope it uh, makes people just pause and think a little more about uh, the Constitution, uh, some of the amendments that maybe we've forgotten about, uh, and just in a humorous way, uh, satirical of, of current politics, you know, just something you can kind of laugh at to let off some steam, maybe, and uh, but also uh, provides you with some you know, information that's pretty accurate and uh, just interesting to watch. Uh, you can show it to your friends and make a, make a point, but also give them a laugh, you know. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping to, hoping to do with it, me and my brother, and we're just hoping that lots of people will get to enjoy it and, and watch it. And maybe it changes some minds, you know. Definitely. We do need to break open some minds here. Well, just to wrap it up, so since Conrad is the living, breathing Constitution and he has to deal with so much out there constantly applying pressure to harm him, what can Conrad teach us about being good neighbors and good Americans? Well, I think uh, one, one key thing to remember is to clean up after yourself and, and your dog. Uh, if you watch episode six, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And and don't make a mess in the first place. You need to, we need to get Obama that episode so he can just stop making a mess of this country. <laughs> All right, Tim. Well, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and, and air the episode right after this interview is over for all of our Prison Planet uh, subscribers. But they can also go to your YouTube channel. Uh, why don't you tell them what it is? Yes, yeah, so you can go to uh, YouTube.com forward slash Fox Bros Studios with two S's. And uh, all the episodes are there. You can search online for Add the Constitution, and the episodes will come up. And we hope you subscribe and uh, stay tuned. Every two weeks, we have a new episode uh, coming out. Well, we'll look forward to it. Thanks so much, Tim. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, stay with us because we will be premiering season two of Conrad the Constitution. And that's just one of the many benefits of being a PrisonPlanet.tv subscriber. You'll be able to catch that premiere. And of course, you can share your username and password with up to 10 other people who can watch the premiere with you. Join us weekdays at 7 p.m. Central. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. What do you say, Baldy? Aren't you excited to visit New York? Of course you are. You want a Mentos? Look, Baldy, we're entering the city limits now. Well, that's a bit odd. All this sightseeing is making me thirsty. Ah, oh, an ice cold cola. Nectar of the gods. Needs more salt. Bereit zum Laden. Sie lassen einen Wissenschaftler mit ihren Dokumenten entkommen. What do you mean? Warum kommst du nicht rüber und sagst mir das ins Gesicht, Mr. Supertaff? Oh boy, do you hear that, Baldy? We get to meet the mayor. I hope he's nice. Want a Mentos, officer? Danke, Kumpel. Вот не задача. Sie lassen einen Wissenschaftler mit ihren Dokumenten entkommen. Wenn ihr wisst, was gut für euch ist. Contraband? I was just drinking a soda. 
Zeit, euer Testament zu schreiben. Buying the items? What the f*** would buy in soda? Ihr schöne Jedi, ihr mit euren ganzen Augen durch die Gegend springt. Now just wait a second. This is America. I have rights. Ich hau dich grün und blau, Kumpel. Ihr Ladies hättet ein paar richtige Männer mitbringen sollen. Well, you haven't banned Mentos, have you? What the hell is this? It's like Sprite without the bubbles. Don't you have any soda for God's sake? some good food around here somewhere, Baldy. Eureka! Oh my, that was fantastic! And now a Mentos to top it off! Whoa! Now that's an interesting chemical reaction! We might be able to use this to our advantage, Baldy. All right, Baldy. Hold on. Ooh, we're flying, Baldy. We're flying. And all thanks to soda. What the hell? Who are you? I'm Conrad the Constitution, and this here is Baldy. We just escaped one of Bloomberg's health camps. It was awful. They made us eat celery sticks and water. Oh my god. Don't worry, though. You're in New Jersey now. You can be as fat as you like. Here, have a turkey. Whoa. Thank you, kind obese man. <laughs> And welcome back. Earlier this year, we reported how Florida Sheriff Nick Finch released a man from jail believing that the man's Second Amendment rights had been violated. Now, this didn't sit well with the officials in Florida, and they charged the sheriff with official misconduct. Constitutional Sheriff Richard Mack has been following this case, and he joins us now via Skype. All right, it's good to talk to you again, Sheriff. Now, I know you're down there. You're actually on the scene at the trial? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so give us the, uh, the latest developments. Well, Jakari, I got to tell you, um, I've been to court and to trials hundreds of times in my 20-year law enforcement career. I've been to every major court in this country, all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. I have never seen such a farce and a frivolous, corrupt prosecution in my life. Wow. This case should have never gone to court. There are no criminal charges here. They are railroading a sheriff who stood for the Second Amendment, who stood for what was right. That was brought up in court that the only reason he did this was to defend the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. There was no other evidence. He has to be convicted of corrupt intent in destroying public documents. There was not any evidence offered that he destroyed any public documents, and there's not one shred of evidence that he did so for corrupt intent. That is, a, that is the term 
do in the law here in Florida for a public official to be charged with this, you have to prove that he did so with corrupt intent. There's absolutely no corrupt intent. It was testified to over and over that he did this specifically to keep his oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States and specifically the Second Amendment. Now, Sheriff, can and you elaborate? Still going for, oh, Sheriff, still I was just going to ask you there. to elaborate more on uh, the, the corruption you say that's going in place in the, in the trial. Well, well, let me tell you. Uh, the, the judge has sided with the uh, prosecutors uh, 90% of all the motions, you know, objections. He just lets the prosecutors do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And the uh, defense attorney, the attorney for Sheriff Finch, asked the people to testify as to what Sheriff Finch said and did. And the prosecutors objected, calling it hearsay. And the judge uh, sustained that every time. They, every time they objected, they, uh, the, the judge sided with them, with the prosecution. And let me tell you, any first-grade law school student knows what hearsay is. Hearsay is uh, that uh, I testify that you told me something that somebody else said. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if you're the suspect and I, and I heard you say something, then I can testify to that. If I'm a direct witness, if I'm an eyewitness or an ear witness as to what you said and did, I can testify to that. The judge didn't allow it. Wow. And so this thing, this thing looks like a mistrial. Uh, I think it's going to be a hung jury, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But the uh, attorney for Sheriff Finch got so frustrated with the judge that he lost his train of thought. He didn't. He didn't do very well in making his point. He stood up there and tried to regain his thinking process because he just couldn't believe that the judge did not know courtroom protocol and the law regarding hearsay. And I will tell you, that in, in most trials. The hearsay rule comes up, and and let me again specify, hearsay does not apply to what I saw and heard the suspect do. Right. In this case, Sheriff Finch is the suspect, and th th this judge just absolutely does not know what he's doing, or if he does, then this is the biggest piece of corruption I've ever seen. No, Sheriff. the entire day was 90% of the, the entire trial and evidence was... Who whited out a name on the jail roster, on the jail log? Who whited it out? It was the great whiteout paper, as if that were a crime, as if that were a felony. And th there was no evidence that the sheriff did it. And, and so we're in this trial about who whited out something. This should have never gone to trial. If the state had a problem with what the sheriff did, then they should have just come to the sheriff and say, hey, we know you're only been, you've only been in office two months. We just want to tell you that you've got to keep the documentation going. You've got to have a paper trail. But no, the governor comes in and suspends him without pay. So this man has not had a job or an income for six months now. And I'll tell you right now, the only people that are helping him keep his head above water and to keep in this trial are people from the GSN group. We really need all the listeners to go to cspoa.org, if you could put that out there, I'd really appreciate it. Go to go to my my website, cspoa.org, and make a donation to Sheriff Finn. And uh, I'll see to it that he gets it. We've already raised uh, about forty thousand dollars for him. We need to raise about four hundred thousand more. He's got to pay for his lawyers. He's got to pay for his family to be taken care of and pay for his house payment. He doesn't have any other income. That's the right, state Sheriff. Has taken away everything from this man. Because we always ask our law enforcement officials, our oath keepers, our constitutional sheriffs to support us, but it's time for us to support exactly. you. And we definitely need uh, support for Nick Finch. But, Sheriff, can you tell us where the trial is currently? Where's the uh, the proceedings going? Okay, right now they just, they just closed for the day. Uh, the defense rested. The defense took over today. Um, the prosecution ended last night. And um, uh, I thought I was going to testify as an expert witness. I guess they decided they didn't need me. They had another expert witness, uh, but neither one of us testified uh, as to the authority and the, the discretion of the sheriff. And uh, it, it, they're just banking on that the prosecution presented no evidence. 
And uh, this this has been just so comical and insane uh, that, seriously, the judge cautioned us in the audience not to laugh anymore. Oh. <laughs> and, Jakar, i got to tell you, Sheriff Finch and his family, his good wife, he has two um, uh, special needs children. They really need our financial support. If he's going to be able to keep on with this fight, this is, this seriously, this is the first time a sheriff has been this bold in defending the Constitution, mm-hmm. defending the Second Amendment. He got arrested for it. He lost his job. He's put his life and career on the line for this whole thing. His wife is here standing next to him and, and standing behind him. We've got a lot of other good people here. Now I hope that the Alex Jones people and, and all of Alex Jones fans and supporters and listeners will get behind this good man. Make a donation at cspoa.org. Let Sheriff Finch know that you're standing behind him, even though you couldn't be here in person, that you'll stand behind him. I've been here for three days now, uh, and I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow uh, to go back home. Um, and anyway, we've got to get behind this guy. This is exactly what we've been praying for. You alluded to it. You're yes. exactly correct. All right, we've Sheriff, Sheriff our time is short. That a public official would do this. Yeah, Sheriff, our, our time is short. Just tell us what's next for Sheriff Richard Mack. Well, uh, we're going to continue this battle uh, for freedom all across the country and defend sheriffs that are being attacked like this, like Sheriff Christopher in Delaware. Sheriff Finch is the biggest battle in America right now for freedom and for the independence and autonomy of the sheriffs uh, for this country. If he loses this, this is going to be a, a horrible step backward for our sheriffs and our constitutional sheriff movement. That's exactly right. So, Sheriff Mack, uh, SheriffMack.com. And thank you for your time, sir. I, I know you got more to say, but our time is short. But we'll put those websites up so everybody can visit those and Sheriff and uh, support Sheriff Nick Finch. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Tell, tell Alex uh, hello and give him my best, and I'll talk to him soon. Okay, thanks, Sheriff. Now, if you suffer in a county that does not have a constitutional sheriff like Richard Mack or like Nick Finch, you can stop by the InfoWars shop and pick up Sheriff Mack's The Magic of Gun Control. Give this to all the people in law enforcement you know, your sheriff, your police chief, anybody you know in law enforcement, they need this book. So you can get that at the InfoWars shop. And also stop by CSPOA and give your support to Nick Finch and also all the sheriffs and law enforcement agencies, these Oath Keepers, who are fighting for your rights. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you again tomorrow night.